Good morning, everybody, and good morning, Increeper Rene, uh, and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft with Dratnos. So, today, we are getting our mount. This is something that every, uh, every character can do at level 20. Some classes actually get special class mounts, warlocks and paladins. But we just get our regular, uh, you, and every race gets their own mounts as well. Besides Worgen. Worgen get uh, running wild, which basically they, they get on all fours and start running. So, you need to have three gold, 40 silver, in order to get apprentice riding, level 20. Uh, it would cost less if we were exalted. It costs five gold default, I think, or four gold default. And then, uh, yeah, it's 15% it's off because we're revered. And there we go. Giddy up. There we go. And uh, we now have learned our mount skill, and now we actually need to get our mount. So we could get any of these different skeletal horses. Uh, let's see. Blue. Let's go with blue. I like blue. Blue's a good color. Added the blue skeletal horse to our collection. It's now in our mounts tab, and we can just drag that over to uh, shift V is where I usually like to have that. And now I can do shift V, blue skeletal horse. There we go. There's somebody in the guild saying, about time for getting my mount. Yes, you can get it as soon as you hit level 20. I am level 22 right now, so obviously taking a little while. Yes. And, uh, yeah, now I can run around at faster speed. Dratnos is on, people are saying, and, uh, somebody else said nope, which is, uh, quite humorous because I am, in fact, on. Right, um, so next thing that we're gonna do, I thought I'd show you guys... Uh, oh, first off, I remembered, I remembered. Uh, let's, let me take, talk to my warrior trainer. Gain up some new warrior skills. Skills of the warrior. Battle shout, heroic throw, and overpower. And let's look through what those abilities do as we move onwards. Uh, battle shout. Let me just set slash busy recording. Smiley face. Um, anyways. Battle shout is in our fury tree. Uh, it's not actually, it doesn't require you to be talented into fury to use it or anything. And when we shout it, uh, for the next, uh, two minutes... All of the people near us get some increased strength and agility, uh, and we generate 20 rage. So that's a good thing to be using quite frequently. Go ahead and stick that over in, uh... Let's see, what makes sense for that? How about Shift B for battle? And so then here is the ruins of Lordaeron. Uh, this is the old capital city of Lordaeron. Undercity is beneath this. I figured I'd show it around to you guys a little bit. So it's a very cool little city, and we can go inside Undercity actually from up here. If you're interested, if you're a Blood Elf, or if you're interested in going to see the Blood Elf starting zone, there's an orb of uh, teleportation right there, orb of translocation, and that can take you to the Blood Elf zone, Quell the Lost. And out there, there's just some undead people hanging about up top. But through here, if you've ever played Warcraft 3, you'll recognize this area from the uh, cinematic where Arthas comes back and kills his dad. Spoilers. Um, and this is the throne room where it's all happened in here. Start of Warcraft 3 with the... Um, Various different kings of various different kingdoms up here, and Medivh coming in and talking to people. That's all up here. This is a very lore-filled area. Here's the tomb of uh, Terranus Minithil II. That's uh, the king. And then these are the elevators down into the Undercity. Now, if you're a Tauren, you can't actually fit through here on some mounts. But if you're any other race, it's not a problem. And you just need to wait for the elevator to get up. That to happen. And then this will close again. Down you go. And there it is. Very, very easy. And now we're in the, uh, the Undercity that you all know and love. Yes, indeed. So, um, what we're going to do today, today we're going to catch up on our jewel crafting skill, because we want it to, uh, to maintain a relatively high level. So, from this point onwards, this is going to be mostly a kind of auction housey slash crafting-y episode. Um, and if you're not interested in seeing this episode, skip to the next one. Not a problem. I don't mind. Doesn't hurt my feelings at all. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. No, it's okay. So, where are we headed? We're headed to the, uh, war quarter, as, is, I believe, where we need to be going for this. Uh, ooh, there's somebody who's dead. Not sure how they died here. Maybe there was an alliance raid and they got caught up in it, or maybe they just jumped from somewhere high multiple times. Um, maybe they got off their flying mount or whatever. Anyways, uh, bad idea, don't die. It's, it's not pleasant. I've done it, I think, twice so far this series, but I can check in statistics, actually. Uh, total deaths, five. Oh, yeah, some of those were in dungeons. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Okay. So, we've got our mining trainer here. I don't think we can learn any new smelting. No, not yet. We need to get to 65 mining before we can do silver. And jewel crafting trainer. Luckily, they're very close by each other. Bronze band of force. Nice. Alright, so let's, uh, let's figure out what we want to do with our jewel crafting to level up now. First off, let's make that stone statue. No reason not to. Of course, stone statue. Easy, uh, 
Easy little thing to do. Get us a nice little uh, level up there, and we'll just sell it off. Nice and easy. Nobody really likes the stone statues. They're just a good way to get rid of that extra stone. And it looks like our, our easiest way up is going to be... Uh, through bronze bar. Yeah, we have enough shadow gem and bronze. So if we make ten bronze bars, we'll be able to make five level ups with thick bronze necklaces. So let's cast smelting. And making bronze would require some copper bars and some tin bars. And we are unfortunately low on copper, it looks like. That's uh, somewhat embarrassing, to be honest. And we can smelt up our tin as well. I'm going to just create, uh, let's see, 12 tin. That should be good. And we'll keep five in case we want to prospect it later. There we go, and you'll see now we're able to create bronze if we want to, out of the tin and the copper. Unfortunately... Oh, wait, no, that's good, that's good. Uh, oh, I made an extra one, but but you can get two bronze for every one copper, so we actually have just enough copper for what we need here in terms of bronze. Very cool. Getting ourselves that extra bronze, there we go. And now we can make either a few solid bronze rings, or we can use less bronze, but some shadow gems and delicate copper wire, and make ourselves some thick bronze necklaces. Here's somebody, Diostiver. We did a dungeon with him, Shadowfang Keep. And, uh, so I'm gonna just say hi to him there in chat as we finish our lovely, uh, dual crafting stuff. If you'd like to join this guild, we're on Drakthron US. Uh, anybody's welcome to join, Horde side, of course. And we'll swap out two agility for three stamina. That seems like a good trade. And that now, since it's soul bound to us, we might as well just what vendor it. it. Do I have extra junk to sell as well? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so, anything new to learn in jewel crafting? Gloom Band. I wonder what that is. That requires some... Oh, okay, yeah, all that's kind of complicated to make. We need, um... Let's see. We need bronze, and for that we're going to need copper. So, what we can do... We're going to need quite a bit of copper. I think we have enough tin to go on. Uh, assuming we use our current tin wisely. So, let's go to the auction house and uh, actually buy some copper. We sold some copper one a few episodes ago. Didn't think we'd need it, but it turns out we do need some more copper. I could either go gather it, which would be quite boring. Uh, and if I did a kind of episode like that, I'd probably speed it up and do like two hours worth of gathering and speed it up to like 20 minutes for you guys. Um, but I'll just check the auction house. I've got quite a lot of gold here. Should be more than enough to my, or to, to get a, a little bit of copper. So we'll just say copper. Uh, and we can get some, let's, let's search for copper bars. We can get copper bars, the price per. This is, again, the auctionator mod. Price per copper bar doesn't look like it's too bad. Looks like we're getting them for a bit less than a gold per. It's not bad. Copper ore, on the other hand, is going to cost us a lot more than that, except for these guys. These guys are a good deal. All right, so we'll take those. Uh, I'll take all of these copper ores. Avelina, I don't even know. I, th I think I recognize that name. I'll take all of these at this percentage, and I'll also take some of the bars... And uh, that should be more than enough copper for us. How are we doing on money? We've still got quite a lot of money. Yeah, okay, I'll leave that and get some copper bars. Let's grab 9 this way and 20 that way. And if we end up uh, with extra, we can always just smelt them into copper bars. And you can see nobody else has any on the market right now. So we'll be able to make a nice profit on them anyway. This would be... Like, if, you were, if you're interested in playing the auction house... Um, ooh, I've just opened all of my mail with the open all button from Postal. And I've just gotten all of the hand-stitched leather cloaks made by anti Dratnos. Oh, uh, a few days late for the scroll. Here, anyways, be cool to do dungeons or something sometime. Okay, uh, oh, I'm, I'm out of bag slots. All right, I've got some hand-stitched leather cloaks by anti -Dratnos. Um, they're cool. Thank you, anti -Dratnos. I'm gonna go ahead and sell them for gold. Um, because they're not all that useful. Although, thank you for creating them. It's always, uh, nice. Any gestures is always comforting. But I don't think that anybody would actually equip those because, uh, they don't have any stats or anything on them. And at, uh, like at the level where you'd want them, then it's like two levels before you level up anyway. Still, thank you for those. And let's go ahead and grab the rest of these. There we go. We've got a bunch of copper now. We have uh, 69 copper ore in our bags and 40 extra in the guild bank. Uh, one of my mods is telling me that. I don't know how recently I've actually checked the guild bank. And where's the copper bars? Uh, there we are. There, there we are. Just it doesn't. There weren't any in the guild bank last I checked. Okay. So let's head over to um, to our trainer again and see what the best strategy for jewel crafting is going to be. So let's do some evaluation here. We can make a gloom band, but for that we need shadow gem. Uh, and there are some on the market for not that for that not that much actually, like two gold a piece. Bronze settings, which actually is probably a good idea to make these because they they're yellow for us. 
Requires some bronze bars. Malachite rings. Uh, probably not. Well, we could maybe make one. It probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, otherwise, a thick bronze necklace. Probably not such a good idea either. I'd say let's make ourselves some bronze settings and see where we're at. So in order to do that, we're going to need to smelt up some bronze. Which means we're going to need to smelt up some tin. So I'm going to smelt all the tin and smelt it all into bronze. Because I don't think that there's any reason not to. Let's do that right now. Um, yep, Diestiver came into our dungeon with us, as he's saying in Guild here. It was, a uh, fun times. Uh, that would be a few episodes ago. Yes, um, so somebody suggested in one of my most recently uploaded videos, that's now, like, a few episodes old, that I start saying the date each time I record a video so that you guys can know how pre-recorded they are, because I'm going to do a lot of pre-recording with this series so that I can, uh, make sure that I, I've got everything at the right level, mostly because I want to keep up with Nearby Gamer in terms of level so that I can keep playing with him on his stream days, which means I'm going to develop a little bit of a backlog in episodes as long as he's uh, leveling very quickly. So today's date is Monday, April 23rd for me, uh, and I will be releasing this probably late this week, um, because I've recorded quite a lot today for you guys. And so that's, uh, that's how things are going. Hope you aren't turned off too much by the pre-recording, because it, it makes it easier. My, the other option would be, would be for me to not show you everything and to level up off-camera, but I figured you guys wouldn't want that. Um, I figured you'd prefer to just have a little bit of a backlog develop. Figured that would be okay. Okay, so we've now got, uh, we can make a lot of solid bronze rings. But I think making some bronze settings makes more sense. Not all of them, let's just make four and see where we're at. Ideally we can get up to, is there anything we can actually learn by being skill 75? Yeah, there is. So let's see what that is. So let's see what the brilliant necklace is. When, and what exactly that requires. That requires, oh, bronze bar, some settings. Four, okay, so that's quite expensive. That's six total bronze and a Masa gate. Is it actually any good? Oh, that's got a lot of stats on it. Um, yeah, it has one of like each stat except less damn. You know what, let's make it. Let's make it. It'll, it'll be fun. Uh, we should probably make some more settings first, though. Let's make a few more of these bronze settings. Um... Yeah, and then um, one more after that. Seems like a good idea. And we'll make ourselves a brilliant necklace. Now, bronze settings makes more sense. Let's make a few more of these. Um, because they're giving us shots at level. They're still good at leveling us up. Okay, turned green. It's not going to be all that good for us anymore. Let's learn bronze torque and the ring of silver might. I wonder what silver bars are going for on the auction house. Let's see when last I scanned. My, I have this add-on that I can scan the auction house with. Um, so let's see, silver, ring of silver might, silver bar. Uh, okay, yeah, they're like three gold apiece on the auction house, that's quite expensive. Uh, given our current gold stash, that would mean we can only get a few of those. So, instead, uh, let's see, bronze torque. Ah, lesser moonstone, now, again, everything is getting quite expensive in terms of resources. Uh, we have a bunch of extra bronze settings, though. Not sure what exactly we wanted. Oh, hello, simple pearl ring, let's, let's see if we can get some small lustrous pearls. Maybe if there are some of those on the auction house. We can make some, uh, we can actually use up our copper bars here. That seems like a good idea. Oh, let's mount up. I'm sure some of you are yelling at me for not mounting up. I've forgotten that I had a mount on this character now. Much faster moving around. Um, I believe it's plus 60% speed, yep. And then at level 40, or maybe 30 now, you can get your super fast mount, which is, uh, plus 100% ground speed. And then at level 60, you can start getting flying mounts, and they can go up to, like, plus 310% speed. Alright, we need small lustrous. Small lustrous pearls. Alright, I'll buy them for 7 gold apiece. I, I'll do it. It's okay, because then I get to use up my copper as well. Yes, I'm sure. Let, let's see. Do I have... Yeah. Because people are sending me stuff anyway, so I think I'll be fine economically. Alright, so that makes us three things. I know I'm, I'm probably not doing this optimally, but I'm, I'm favoring speed over actually pulling out a, a pencil and paper and doing the uh, calculations here regarding what... Because ideally, you'd look at all the things and you'd say like, okay, this one's going to cost me an average of five cents per level up, or five copper, or whatever it is, five gold. Um, but that's not what we're doing. Let's see, is this actually good? Yeah, this increases our hit rating by quite a bit. Um, that is probably better than... Oops, I stopped halfway through there. It's probably better than uh, one of ours. I'd say that's probably better than the stamina ring. Because strength will help us kill things faster right now, and that's more important than stamina at this current point, because we're only really tanking in dungeons, and we're... We haven't really done any dungeons where, the, where we're the tank yet. Although I hopefully, I think I'm going to do one next episode. I'm just going to queue for a random dungeon. And I'll maybe bring Diost with me. Diostiver. Because he means I'll level faster. Uh, let's see. Cool. So we've leveled up our jewel crafting now to 83. And we can probably use... Yeah, okay, let's make ourselves a brilliant necklace. I, I'll do it. 
First off, let's actually make this Malachite ring. Maybe we'll get a level up on it. Maybe we'll get lucky. Nope. We should have done that earlier, I guess. And we'll make the Brilliant Necklace, because why not? That's okay. It's got a lot of stats on it, and the, the strength and the agility is probably going to be overall uh, up an upgrade for us. So there we go. Go ahead and stick that on. And we'll make one more bronze setting. No, that's... that's do we get anything by being level 85 in jewel crafting? Nothing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have a few extra greens. Um, somebody in chat here is asking how you get uh, lesser magic essences. Disenchant things. Smiley face. So yes, lesser magic essences come from, dis from enchanting. Basically, if you disenchant green items, they'll drop different essences, dusts, shards, and crystals. And you, you then you can recombine those. If you're interested, I'm considering... As soon as I get this character up to a high level, I'm going to start doing like... I'm going to switch up my Let's Play, so it'll be high-level content from this character, and I'll start leveling up alts with different professions and stuff, and you guys can see everything that this game has to offer. Uh, hopefully, that's my plan. Alright, somebody in trades looking for a Jewel Crafter, but I don't think they're looking for a low-level Jewel Crafter. I think it's probably a high-level one to cut them different gems. Uh, so what do we want to do? We've got a lot of extra copper. We got far, far more than we needed. Hopefully we can... Uh... You know what, I'll just I'll put it in the Guild Bank. I'm sure that somebody in the in the guild can use some of this copper. Um, yeah. And then I've got a few soulbound thingies. Um, you can D slash E anything in the G bank if you want. Smiley face. Um, yes, alright. Let's put in some of these things here. Some of these things that aren't soulbound. Uh, that. And... I believe that's it. Yeah, okay. Put in a few more. Uh, there we go. Nicely done. Nicely done, me. Um. Okay. He's out of takeouts here. Do you want more? Okay, G Gigor wants uh, some stuff for disenchanting. All right. Let me get him some. Uh, cause I'm a nice guy. He's gonna. He's gonna like. Here, let's take these out of the bank. Uh, and pass them over to him. Where's Gigor? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Gligor. Gleg- Gleger. I don't even know. Ble? Glever? Gleger? Where'd he go? What is this? What is this magic? Sorcery! Witchcraft! Okay, fine. Well, I'm not gonna give him stuff. I guess you should just increase the amount of deposits people can with- or amount of withdrawals people can make per day. So yes, that's, uh, okay. Cool. So our trade skills now. Uh, how are we doing on first aid? Do I have any linen cloth on me? Let's let's see if we can do th some better stuff with first aid. And up we go. Again, uh, hopefully if you're not being in engaged by this, I hopefully you're just like alt-tabbed or whatever and just listening to me talk or whatever. I hope you're not uh, angry that I'm doing boring episodes like this one. I don't think it's super boring, but I do think that um, it's perfectly fine to skip these episodes if you're uh, more engaged by the ones where we actually do stuff. And as I get... Further on, we'll be doing more different types of episodes. Um, and so you can pick and choose. There's no problem with that. Alright, we didn't make enough linen bandages to advance to the next level of that either. So that's sad. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and stick all of the copper into the guild bank at least. There we go. Alright, so that's, uh, that's been our economic episode. Next episode, I'll either be doing a dungeon or uh, some more questing down in, in South Shore. Which used to be an alliance base, but then uh, it got destroyed... And we kind of took it over during the Cataclysm. So go Horde, yeah! Yes. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. My name has been Jadnos, I now have a mount, and my trade skills are now a bit more trade skilly. Thanks everybody for watching, my name has been Jadnos. I'm repeating myself. Goodbye. Good morning everybody, and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft. So, today, we are doing a dungeon. That is correct, a dungeon. And joining me today is... the ah, a lag spike. Uh, okay, a lag spike, and Diustiver. Diustiver, a gentleman I recruit offended, uh, was online, and since he's around my level, I figured, you know what, I recruit offended a guy, I get, we get benefits when we're leveling together, I may as well level up with him, because, because that's what I'll do. If I recruit a friend to you, and you're around my level, and you're online when I am, I'll do dungeons with you, it's sure. And I figured, you know what, you guys want to see everything that happens with this character, so, I'm gonna record it, too. So, uh, so that's what we're doing, that's what we'll do. Alright, I'm gonna queue us up now. Hopefully he can, uh, telepathically... Ooh, wait, hang on. I- I wanna be tanking. Yes. Let me make sure I have all my abilities in my tank set as well. 
Mm, yes. Taunt will be shift C. All right. Here we go. Random dungeon. Oh, Shadowfang Keep. Okay. This is the one we were doing uh, with nearby and friends. Uh, it looks like it's probably already in progress. Oh. Oh my goodness. Dudes. Okay. Shift C. Take him. Take aggro. We've got aggro. All right, we are a tank. Yes, let us uh, let's make sure that I have all of my abilities set up here. Sunder armor, good thing to be using. I'll keep that there. Uh, arms, yeah, overpower requires battle stance. No heroic throw, good one to have. Okay, let's go ahead and buff up here. Yeah, battle shout. Get us a little bit of rage and hua. Hiya, hiya. We have aggro from everybody. Yes, we do. Sounds good. All right, so we just need to take take all the damage here, and hopefully not uh, get killed. Brilliant. Dreads a dread scryer here, and a spite bone flayer. Those are our enemies, and we're gonna slice them up. Uh, this is a random party that we found. I don't know anybody here except Diustiver, uh, and we met them just by hitting the uh, dungeon finder button. So uh, that's that done. Hopefully, yeah. Here comes the quest guy. We don't actually have the quests for here because we've already done this dungeon. You can do dungeons multiple times, it's fine. Let me go ahead and actually untrack this for now so you don't see that over on the side there. Why is the door shut? What in Sylvanas' name is going on here? If, you're, if you missed the first time that we played this, a few episodes back we did this with nearby. Chromush, what happened? Uh, ready? Question mark, smiley face. Let's make sure that our group is ready. Oh, wait. Trash. We need to get the trash first, before we pull, pull the boss. Uh, people call mobs that aren't the boss trash, because you have to, like, throw them out every time, and they don't actually give you any good stuff. Uh, so if you're... Ooh. We've still got aggro. Yep. Yeah. This little thing in the center of the screen is just going to be nice and let me know when I have aggro. Ooh. We pulled it. Nope. Okay, he was just doing an ability. Keep on going with the damage. Good job, damage dealers. Looks like these guys are pretty good at doing damage, especially uh, relative to yesterday when we had some underleveled people, mostly me, in our group. Uh, and people who weren't even damage dealers, mostly me in our group. Da da da, da da da, da da da. Diust, of course, is a tank as well, but nobody, nobody will notice that. That's not going to be a problem. Ha! Huh. Getting some uh, nice recruiter friend experience here. It's making me very happy. That's uh, joyous. Getting a little bit faster leveling. It's making me happy. And here we go. Let's do this. And mortal wound on me. So basically, every few seconds, this guy can hit me with mortal wound. Oh, and summoning bloodthirsty ghouls. That's not very nice. Can I... There we go. Pistol barrage. Oop, do not stand in front of that. That is that ability. This boss does a, a bunch of different things. Mortal wound happens to the tank or whoever has aggro every few, uh, every few seconds. And the basic idea is that you kind of need to not get it built up on you too many times or else it'll be impossible to heal you. Um, now, thankfully, he, he rarely will keep attacking for a very long time. But you can see it's stacked up to three on me right now. Uh, and it'll probably fall off here. Nope, okay, it's gotten up to four. That's not good. I should be Sunder Armoring, because uh, I'm bad at this game. And now it's... Oh, Mortal Wound 5. Not good. And Pistol Barrage. Definitely need to be out of that. Uh, thankfully, Mortal Wound should fall off now that it's... Uh... Okay, is our healer still alive? I don't even know. Yeah, our healer looks like he's still alive. This is good. Uh, we, we should be able to get this guy down. Basically, Mortal Wound is a stacking effect that uh, he'll keep applying to us. And the general idea is that uh, we need to start avoiding it. And that's mostly luck-based, because we don't have a, another person to take over tanking here. I suppose we do, but we, we can't coordinate that very easily. We're not in voice chat or anything. Oop, I'm standing in front of that like a noob. Derp. Uh, I was explaining the fight. There we go. We got him. Level 23. Awesome. Looks like my, my bar down there is a little bit not sure what it's doing. Unless I just leveled up halfway to 24. Or as well, which I don't think I did. I don't think I gained that much experience from that. Thanks, guys. Smiley face. Uh, another question mark? Let's see if we if we want to do another uh, dungeon with these people. Or maybe maybe they don't. Maybe they're done. I'm just gonna slash reload UI so that uh, whatever is making my awesome stuff not awesome will uh will hopefully go away. My mods. I use UI modifications. I'll make a video with a list of them at some point, but you can see which ones. I talk about them in episode one. Okay, Jabul is the uh, leader of our group. He could, he should be able to cue us for another one. 
And we all, because that was my first um, random of the day, I didn't queue for specific ones, I queued randomly. I got a satchel of helpful goods, which uh, in this case just contains uh, a, a better belt than we currently have, so that's good. We've gotten an upgrade. Awesome. Uh, can we queue again? Yeah, let's join this party. I've started a new, new random one here. People are queuing up as uh, various different things here. And wow, it looks like we might have just leveled up to almost 24 as well. If, unless, unless I'm drastically mistaken. How did we, how did we gain this XP? What is, what is going on in this world? Yeah, Diustiver has gotten up to ridiculous level as well. Maybe, oh, maybe it's because of the bonus experience you get from doing a random dungeon. I don't even know. Something is, something is very cool. Or strange or whatever. But it's going to be good because I want to be about the same level as nearby for next, uh, for the next stream thing that we're doing, which will be, I don't know when. I'll make sure to let you guys know when that's happening. Who hasn't clicked a button? Let's see. Um, Nihlo. This guy. Warlock. Uh, Nihilo. Question mark. We just need him to click his button and then we can all start a new dungeon if we want to. There we go. Smiley face. There we go. Let's do it. In we go. To Shadowfang Keep again. Oh, man. Oh, this is the grindiest grind of grindfulness. Ah, the same dungeon. But it's okay. It's okay. The things I do to level up to catch up to nearby gamer. Ah. Lol, same one. Alright. Huh. Well, at least it didn't have that long to load in for us. That's the upside here. Always think about the upsides, guys. Hiya! Huh. Let's get these guys killed. Again, if you don't, if, if you're, uh, you're not going to see any new content here that you, I'll try and talk about the whole dungeon a bit more this time because now I'm not doing it uh, in multiplayer or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's, this will be the same dungeon that we've done now uh, like two and a half times. So if that's, uh, if that's going to not do it for you, go ahead and skip this, uh, this episode here. Yeah, you can skip from here. I would, n I would not blame you. However, I will continue to produce this episode because I know you guys, some of you actually want to see everything that this character does. Uh, and I don't do that for many of my series, but I decided I'd do that for this one um, because, because I care. And again, feel free to just skip over to the next episode. The annotation should be up at the top right as soon as the next episode is out and I can uh, have the time to do that. Huh. So we're just tanking here. Our goal is to just maintain aggro. We're doing that by just doing quite a bit of damage with our shield slam. Thunderclap, and uh, we're also taunting as necessary. I haven't had to yet, actually, use my Shift-C taunt ability. Just gaining the aggro that way. I'm going to turn unit frames on, actually, uh, which is this button, I believe. Yeah, there it is. And I can see what's aggroed onto me and what isn't. Uh, now, hopefully, again, this isn't uh, too cluttered a screen for you guys. Hopefully, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, this is what this is what makes it easiest for me to play. Uh, but I know it might not be the best viewing experience. Again, I kind of need to play acceptably well in order to... Uh, have the viewing experience work, so it's a trade-off. Okay, some extra strength on those. I'll go ahead and greed that and disenchant that. So we have an enchanter in the group, which means that we can all just choose to have any uh, any loot that we would... Let me explain the loot system. Basically, when a green item drops and you're in a group, and it's like a looking for dungeon group where you've set up the uh, need for greed system, you can have it looted so that like one person's in control of who gets what, or it's free-for-all or whatever. But the most oftenly used system in random groups, uh, or the only one actually usable in random groups, is uh, need before greed. The basic idea is that if you need an item, that means you can equip it and it's good for you. Um, although, yeah, what's good for you, you might be wrong about that and you might hit need when you really shouldn't, uh, which happens quite frequently, actually. Anyways, need before greed, you need an item, uh, and then anybody who needs the item will have first priority at it. Otherwise, if nobody needs it, then greed is the second tier, and anybody who's greeted it can, uh, can then also... Uh, roll against you for that, and so all the all the needs roll against each other. If there's no needs, then all the greeds roll against each other, and uh, greeds and disenchants are the same priority. Disenchant is basically I'd like just the dust or whatever from that item, which uh, may, it, it's only possible if you have an enchanter in the group that would be capable of disenchanting it. All right, we have Baron Ashbury here. Oop, he's casting his pain and suffering ability. Uh, I would interrupt that if I could, but I can't because I don't have interrupt yet. Uh, again, this guy's kind of here, so what's happening is we're all going to get down to a very low health. I'm not sure we have anybody with an interrupt, actually. Uh, but basically, yeah, we get healed up and then somebody needs to interrupt that. Okay, good, somebody got an, uh, got an interrupt off. Well done. 
and pain and suffering, which is a second priority to interrupt because it's not it's not nearly as bad to just let him heal up to full. That would be really bad. Uh, yeah, I should be using Sunder Armor more. I should get Sunder Armor up to five. It's a good way to tank. Uh, later on, we'll get an ability called Devastate, which does it better. Uh, but for now, Sunder Armor is is a, a fine thing, and I should be using it because it also helps me. It generates a high amount of threat, I believe. Yeah, Sunder Armor causes a larger amount of threat. So Sunder Armor is basically a very good tanking ability. All right, let's see if we can nuke this guy down here. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Fair enough. And 4.1%, 3.2%, 2.0%, and he's down. It's not a problem. Baron Ashbury slain. Level 24. Wow, leveling ridiculously fast here. Ridiculous fast. Nice. All right, I'll disenchant those. Um, or if I... Yeah, so we've got a disenchant, a pass. Pass basically means I don't want it. Don't give it to me. Greed uh, and disenchant. So all the disenchants and greeds will roll against each other unless somebody needs it, which nobody did. And so then it disenchants. It gets disenchanted for loot. Sweet. We've leveled up here. Yes. I'm going to just pull this guy back here. We're using our heroic throw ability, which basically um, is... It's basically a tanking pull ability. Um, it Yeah, you throw your weapon at them, and they're like, Oh, somebody's thrown a weapon at me. And they come and hit you. But you actually can do damage with it, so it's it's not a horrible ability to be using. Uh, it's mostly kind of like a, a way to pull things from afar, but it's also like mid-combat, if you're or if you're like running back to a boss because you've had to run away from him. It's not a bad, horrible ability. We'll go ahead and take this guy here. Oop. Interesting choice by Diostiver to, uh, to run in there. And we've got some ads coming in here. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I got him. Not a problem. Not a problem. Holding some aggro here. Not a huge problem. Again, I'm... I'm now level 24, and these guys are level 19, so uh, tanking isn't going to be ridiculously hard here, although these guys would be fairly easy to tank even if I was a bit at their level or a bit below, unless there were uh, all the DPS are really good, which in fact they kind of are in this group. The DPS here, damage per second, damage dealers, whatever you want to call them, are very good here. Let's go ahead and pick this guy up. Yep, we've got all the aggro. Doing good here. Feeling all right. Just keep on uh, keeping all the aggro, switching back and forth between targets, casting Sunder Armor on each of them. And when we get Thunderclap up again, we'll use that. Thunderclap's a good way to make sure that they're all hating us. Because that's our job. Our job as a tank is to make everybody hate us. Which is nice, because uh, because I'm Dratnos and everybody already does hate, hate me. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this guy here. Attack! We could skip some of these guys, but to be honest, uh, given that I'm getting so much experience from killing them, I kind of want to kill everybody in this dungeon, because I'm not sure I want to do another after this one. I might, I don't know. I might just keep leveling up with uh, Diestiver through some dungeons, and maybe do more of a, a lore stuff, because uh, we've gotten through a lot of the... Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to keep episodes varied and, and interesting for you. That's mostly my goal, is to make sure that you don't just get a ton of questing. Although, the questing is pretty darn good right now, so uh, uh, hopefully you're finding that enjoyable. Again, uh, I plan on doing some raided battlegrounds, or not ba raided battlegrounds, regular old level up battlegrounds at some point as well. And I'll probably, if I'm ever on, uh, and no, nobody I've recruited friends is on, I'll try and do some dungeons with other guildies. Right now, it makes a lot of sense for me to just uh, grab a recruiter friend and go, because uh, it's, uh, it's nice, it's easy, and the triple experience is very good for both of us. And I feel kind of, I kind of feel like I owe it to the people I recruited friended to get their triple XP from uh, being recruited by me, because otherwise I don't feel like they're getting that much value. Again, only if they're around my level and it's not too much effort to, uh, to help them out. Which in this case it isn't, and Diost is a. Uh, uh, yes, I'm glad that he's glad that he's joining us for all this fun time. Makes it a bit faster for me as well, which is nice because I don't have to develop too many episodes of backlog for you. All right. Huh. Hiya. Huh. And Diost, uh, I don't think he has like a Skype or whatever. I didn't check with him beforehand if he wanted to be talking in commentary in this video as well. But either way, I'm not sure. Uh, He's, he's a member of the guild. Anybody can join our guild. You can come over to Drakthron US, and it's uh, a guild that you can join. It's called the Dratconian. We're very cool. It's, uh, yeah, there's not really, it's just mostly a kind of a big, friendly guild. That's the, the general idea. All right, let's pump, pull this guy over from here. Oop, get this guy, and make sure these guys both hate us equally. Everybody should hate everybody equally. And that guy's going down. Looks like we don't need to generate any more threat on him. Ooh, we pulled another. Grab him. Not a problem. No problemo. Situation normal. Crisis averted. The last guy still over there. Yeah, he is. Okay. Uh, for those of you wondering why I'm not charging, 
right now I, I can't actually charge in defensive stance, which is what I do. In tanking, I, I'm in defensive stance. Um, eventually I'll get a talent that'll let me do that. Ooh, I have a new talent point, actually. Let's learn the next level of shield spec. And there's a, an enchantment formula. Uh, I'll go ahead and pass on that. I don't care. It's not a great enchant. But yeah, um, like every, every, every profession, you can, you can get to full skill level just by learning all the things from the teachers. But you can also get special enchants or jewel crafting recipes or whatever uh, at your... Uh, by finding them in recipes in random places. Let's go ahead and just make sure that everybody here is hating us. Keep all the hate. Uh, let's see, we need to grab hate on this guy. Make sure it's secure. Basically, the red around their portraits means that they hate me. And uh, then if it goes yellow or, or anything else like that, it means it's close. And that I need to be holding it more. Oh, there's a haunting spirit. Let's kill that. Uh, those things spawn. So basically, one of these guys has a curse that causes somebody to start being haunted by spirits. Not very nice, but it's uh, it's kind of the iconic curse of this dungeon, actually. Is the uh, haunting of spirits of people. I remember it used to be very annoying going through this area because it used to last like five minutes. Yes. All these uh, lovely pre cata things that I remember. Okay. Uh, I've got a little bit of looting to do here. Seer's pants. Okay. Disenchant. They're cloth, so I don't want them. We'll throw an attack at this guy. Just keep on chain pulling here. Pull quickly and rapidly, and hopefully we can get this thing done in a nice amount of time that isn't wasting anybody else in the group's time. When it was just the misfits and uh, people in my guild, I, I'd go slower, but here, um, I kind of I feel obligated to the group to uh, not be wasting their time here talking to you guys too much. So I'll talk to you guys while pulling, is the, uh, the happy compromise I can reach with uh, you the viewers and you the players. Uh, and the players can't hear me, so I'm kind of talking to myself here like I'm a mildly crazy person, which I am, so that's good. I'm not really a mildly crazy person. I'm very, cra very crazy. Very crazy. Baron Silverlane, charge! Huh! 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 Attack! Veil of Shadow. Ooh. Healing effects reduced on me. That's not very nice. Luckily enough, I don't take that much damage, and actually the priest is a disciplined priest, it looks like. Which means he's a priest specialized in just putting shields up on me, and so that's not even affected by negative things like that. Oh, nearby! Uh, okay, yeah. Let's uh, keep the keep the fighting going here. Keep all this uh, awesome fighting here. I remember nearby dying here is what I was. Uh... Oh no, nearby didn't die here. Nobody died here. N uh, nearby's wife died later in the dungeon when we played this with with them. Yes, yes, that's the uh, that's what happened. Those are the occurrences. Uh, he's summoning more worgen spirits here. I'm just going to keep them all on me. Rethel Gore and I think the next guy he summons both used to be bosses in this dungeon. Uh, but it's no big deal, I don't have to actually- we don't have to kill them, they'll disappear as soon as he dies. So I'm just gonna keep all the hate, keep him focused on me. Veil of Shadow, that could be a problem, uh, now that I'm getting so much damage being laid on me. But we got him. And hey, somebody's just hit level 20, grats. Uh, grats, smiley face. Silver Lane's Family Seal, ooh, nice, I'll go ahead and need that. Sweet. Got it. Got it. Uh, let's see what- which one is it? Yeah, there's the best upgrade. I believe, yep. Cool. Sweet. Got a nice new ring, the Silver Lane's Family Seal. Seal. That's the one we let uh, Toria have last last time we were doing this. Oh. Derp. Uh, so the, the healer said one sack right after I pulled. Just gonna run back on here. Uh, am I gonna survive this? Alright, I'm just gonna back up over to the healer. And, yeah. So if in doubt, run to the healer if you pull, if you accidentally pull things. If you're a tank, Okay, if you're a tank, run to the healer if you're in trouble. Uh, not if you've got something chasing you, but like if they're out of range. If you're a DPS and you've accidentally pulled, run to the tank. Uh, because then they can pull it back off of you. And if you're if you're a healer and you've accidentally pulled something, uh, usually a good tank will be focusing his priority on keeping things off the healer. That's priority number one is a good tank. Uh, now I'm not a good tank, so that, uh, I don't know. That's, uh, that's just what I've heard from good tanks. Yes. There we go. Keep on uh, killing off these Skellingtons. I can probably solo this guy, actually. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, oh, right. He, for he said he was going to be right back. I forgot about that, didn't I? It's okay. He'll be coming. It'll not be a problem. I think I can actually take this guy down by myself, though. He's at 54%. I'm at 53%. I can do it. When I get down low enough. Yeah, it'll be fine. Here come more people. We got him. Not a problem. Huh. 
Hiya! So these guys are all elites in here, which means they're not designed to be taken on one-on-one. -on -one. It would have been probably improbable that we would have... Yeah, we wouldn't be able to take this whole place, certainly. There are people that try to solo things at different levels. Um, that's what it's actually called, soloing. And there's actually kind of a whole culture that's built up around who can solo the most epic things. So, like, people soloing all these old bosses, and even some bosses from the last expansion pack, or even this one. They're being, like, ridiculous and making sure that they have the gear to do it, and then doing all this absurd strategy that makes them makes it possible to solo different things. Tons of respect to people who do that. It's always good. Whatever, whatever makes you happy in this game, whatever's your challenge, whatever is your, your niche, uh, I think they're all valid. And I think that as long as it's entertaining for you and you're not messing up anybody else's fun, uh, then that is, is legit. Yes. Let us uh, continue our carnage and death and destruction here. Keep on killing these guardsmen. Nice job. And there's uh, some, some dudes. Let's pull one at a time. Okay, yeah, we pulled two of them, but they, they pulled together, but at least we didn't pull the boss, which is the, uh, the important thing to be doing here. All right, uh, we'll wait on healer mana. There's our healer, by the way. There's his unit frame. I've reduced the size of some of the unit frames. You saw me do that, I think, on camera during one of the episodes. So I just was messing up with messing with my UI so that it would uh, work a bit better for me. Okay. Uh. Oh, we pulled. No, that wasn't me. That was not me. So. Uh... <laughs> okay. Let's uh, see if we can burn him down. I'm gonna scoot him. Oh, desecration. All right. We need to hop around the other side of this. Let's get her over here. Up this side, and I'll I'll pull him over to a corner. Ooh, there's his shield thing. We don't want to stand in front of that. And keep on killing. Not a problem. It's no problemo. And we'll just pull him out of that desecration. Desecration slows us down and causes a lot of damage. We'll just move him over here. Ideally, we want the desecrations to land so that a lot of them land off the uh, the area, so that they don't cause problems for the rest of the group. So we'll just pull him back to another corner so that very little of the desecration actually becomes a problem when he casts again. But it doesn't look like he'll have the chance to because he's dead. Oh, nope. He did have the chance to right before he died. Arched War Axe. Two-handed axe. Again, that would be fine if we were uh, if we were arms, which we're not. We'll pass that. I think that dropped last time as well. It, it has a pretty cool model, though. That's the model. You can control to click on any items link, and it'll, you'll see the item. There's actually a pretty good interface for like linking achievements and items and professions. You can link anything in chat usually just by hitting enter and then shift clicking on the thing you want to link. Yeah, and then they can actually click on that and learn about the item. Let's pull this officer here. Huh. Getting through this place in uh, some nice, nice quick time. Again, we've uh, gotten more than halfway through our level this, this way. Recruiter friend makes it very easy to level very quickly. Uh, but I'm also doing this primarily for the benefit of the, uh, the gentleman I've recruited friended. I feel a bit of an obligation towards those that I recruited friend. Uh, which, if you're interested in being recruiter friended, uh, note that I, I'm not guaranteeing that I'll play any dungeons with you or anything. It's just that if I have the chance and it's convenient for, and doable for both of us, then I'd, I'd love to do that in order to make sure that we both uh, get a little bit of a, a you know, of a benefit from, from the recruiter friend. All right. Let's see if I can get this guy. I'll just jump over the side here. Fun fact, uh, and this is something I've learned doing it multiple times, if you jump off the side of this dungeon, it actually will phase you back into the real world, because like if we walked off the side here, this isn't Silver Pine Forest. Like, lore-wise it is, but the zone isn't the same as Silver Pine Forest out there. Um, and you'd have to actually... It, it'll give you a loading screen, and then you'll load in and fall to your death in Silver Pine Forest, not in Shadowfang Keep. If that makes sense to anybody. Um, if it doesn't, don't worry. It's just a little bit of a technical thing that's always uh, a bit fun. A bit, a bit interesting to learn the mechanics behind the game. Always, in my, in my uh, understanding. Huh. Huh. What are people saying? Oh, nothing. Nothing important. Always, I, I try and monitor guild chat during these um, recordings, but it's usually like the last priority because I've got a bunch of other priorities into making interesting content. Um, when I do more live streams, which I plan on doing a lot of wild live streams at some point in the future, um, I'm looking forward to being able to engage with you guys in those. Hopefully we can stream some raids at some point. That would make me happy. If I can get together the 25 best raiders who watch, or 24 best raiders who watch me, or even the, the 9, and then we could do some uh, awesome raids. That would be cool. Huh. Ha. Huh. huh. Keep on killing. Keep on killing. Just keep on attacking. Just keep attacking. Keep killing the fetid ghouls. Ghouls, 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 that's pronunciation. There we go. You can see again the reason that I'm not using my rested experience is because I've got a recruiter friend buddy with me. So we both level uh, uh, at 300% speed 
and it doesn't stack with any of the other speed bonuses, like, uh, like the ones you get for being rested. Now, I know you don't have to pull these guys, you can just jump across the roofs, but to be honest, uh, somebody else would probably pull it if we die later, and it's XP, there's no reason not to, really, because we're leveling up. If we were doing this as a heroic dungeon, just to get, um, bonuses at level 85 from killing bosses, then I wouldn't bother killing these guys, I'd just run around the side. But since we're doing it to level up, there's, uh, just as much value in, I mean, obviously it's good to get to the bosses, but it's also good to kill the, tra the trash, it's no problem. Alright, let's get these guys. Huh! Yeah, I managed to hit all of them with that. There we go, skill play. Skill play, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's move him into the fire here. Okay, or not. See, I'm a good tank. I move things into people's AoE, because uh, the Warlock has an ability to cast down a rain of fire on any target area. And if I see that on the ground, it's a good idea to just move the mobs over to it. Not that hard for me to do, and it gives him some damage. Large Ironbound chest is locked, but this rogue, rogues can pick locks. So he'll be able to actually open up that chest. And was there anything in it? No, just uh, just some... I don't even know what that is. Shimmering Amis. Oh no, that's uh, shoulder pads. Cloth shoulder pads. Yeah, nothing all that special in that chest. Right. Let's proceed onwards. Huh. And let's get him. Huh. There we go. Holding aggro here. Oops. Lag spike. Lag spike. That reminds me of a uh, Tribes Ascend video I did where I lag spiked right as I was about to cap the flag for about three seconds. Zero frames per second for three spe seconds. Made me a sad panda, although I did still end up capping, which uh, made me happy. Tribe Descend, if you don't know, it's a series. It's another game that I, I do a series on. Um, it's a first-person shooter, very fast, fun, good game. I enjoy it profusely. I enjoy most games profusely, otherwise I wouldn't play them on my channel. Um, yeah. Again, like World of Warcraft, it's a good idea to make sure you're always enjoying your games when you're playing them. Uh, so if you, if you are finding yourself ever doing something that you're not actually enjoying, then uh, stop playing with uh, pretty much any game. That goes for any game, although it happens more often in World of Warcraft than other games because the World of Warcraft is basically designed to keep you playing even if you're not having fun. Like, ideally, all their players would be having fun, but as a second priority, Blizzard wants people to still be playing, even if they're not having fun. Which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, you can understand the business model. It's capitalism. That's how it works. Um, and basically, they they've designed a game that's... Uh, tries to keep you playing because it gives you bonuses every day, like daily quests that you you can need to come back every day to do, and uh, your friends are all relying on you to be a certain level of gear so that you can do stuff with them. And so you can end up being in a situation where like 10% of your game time is actually fun. If that's the case, again, reevaluate. Re make, sure make sure that you're not making a bad decision. Make sure you're aware of what you're doing. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I don't believe I don't believe video games are a bad addictive influence. Um, I think you just like they're, I don't think they're any worse than anything else that exists. Um, like television is designed to do the same thing to make you come back each week, even if you don't necessarily like the episode. Um, my like even my my YouTube channel, ideally like every YouTube channel is designed so that people come and watch things, and obviously I prefer people watch things than not. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, it's it's a kind of it kind of sucks. That, that the system is designed like this, but it's also, it's not, it's not like evil, I don't think. I think it's just people wanting to make money, which is understandable. Um, everybody wants to make money. Right, here's Lord Walden. I'll wait for everybody else to get up here before we attack him. Uh, unless somebody runs in and pulls accidentally, which has been known to happen before. All right, is everybody here? Uh, where's the, I think Dios is the guy lagging behind a little bit. There he is. Let's do it. Hiya! Even here, I find myself beset by fools. Huh. 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 Let's keep on applying some damage. Keep on applying dat damage. Huh. Ooh, ice shards. Do not want to stand there. I should be paying attention to where those ice shards are going. And not standing where they're about to land. Good job. Uh, what's he doing now? Anything special? No, nothing too bad. Nothing too bad. Uh, we've got our warlock here. Firing some... some destruction-y death at them. Our priest here, keeping everybody healed up. That's the Warlock's Imp minion. Uh, there's our warrior friend, Diastiver. We recruit a friend of him. And there's a rogue with two daggers, uh, causing some pain to Lord Walden here. Lord Walden does not have much longer here. Huh. Got him. Butcher's Cleaver. One-handed axe with agility and stamina on it. We'll go ahead and pass that. I assume the uh, rogue will want that, depending on his specialization. Actually, unless he's assassination. Let's see his talents. He is subtlety, so he wants to be dagger, yeah. If he was combat, he'd want uh, the axe, probably, but I assume he doesn't want that axe, because he probably 
he gets bonuses since he's subtlety for using daggers, I believe. Different specializations have different things. It's like how we have fury. If we had fury, we'd use two one-handed weapons. If we had arms, we'd use a two-handed weapon. But since we have protection, we're using a sword and a shield. And it's the same for other classes in different ways. Diostiver actually ended up winning that cleaver there. Nice job. That's what it looks like. Uh, not really a warrior weapon, but I'd understand if it was better than his current one. Again, all this kind of stuff about like agility not being that good for warriors uh, is true, but agility is still better than nothing, and like five agility is still better than like one or two strength. Although three strength is better than five agility. Uh, strength, uh, a basic rule of thumb is strength is basically twice as good as agility for warriors. Now, if you're a hunter, uh, agility is like infinite, infinitely better than strength. And if you're a rogue, uh, it's about two times better. Uh, yeah, it's just the way that the math works out. They basically designed it so that you want to be getting the right thing so that you're not stealing other people's armor. Um, yeah, that's how it works. Because basically, as a warrior, you get two points of attack power for every one strength you have, and just one point for... Or you only get crit chance from your agility. Um, and it's kind of the other way around, in, in a bit of a different way, depending on if you're, if you're a leather-based uh, class. All right, here we are at the same place that we were when we first spawned into this dungeon with these guys, like... 20 minutes ago and like three levels ago because we're leveling again ridiculously fast here and let's uh keep oh that guy pulled we we accidentally lost aggro on a dude we should have been paying more attention i didn't think we'd done that up to this point but we we goofed we pulled him back though we have taunt taunt basically pulls it, it's like a panic button um it didn't used to be nearly as good it used to like not work on bosses at all uh which made tanking much harder uh and much more fun in my opinion um at the lower end at least um, but I'm, I, for many people, it was very frustrating uh, because they were having trouble tanking. So they've made taunt work on pretty much everything at this point. Uh, you can just taunt anything to attack you, uh, and it'll give you threat as well. It'll, it'll put you. It'll, it'll basically. It's basically a very good panic button. You can hold aggro against things uh, very easily with taunt. Cool. Okay. Uh, now we just need to wait for the story guy to come on up here. Deathstalker Commander Belmont. Belmont. Belmo, oui, le Deathstalker Commander. That's the that's my French accent. And again, the same storyline happens each time. Nothing special. There are a few dungeons that actually change things up each time. Usually, it's just like one of five random bosses happens each time at a certain point. Um, examples of this would be Trial of the Champion. Um, let's think. There's a sort of version of it in. Uh, Magister's Terrace. And I know that there's a few in some of the Cataclysm ones as well. I've forgotten which, though. Um, where there are actually different bosses each time in different areas. But they rarely actually change, like, the big storyline of a place. The best you can do is, like, sometimes you get two different options for doing things. Uh, an example of that would be the Raid Ulduar. You can have boss fights have a totally different experience, whether you, uh, based on how you start them often, or how you do them in different exciting ways. Yes. Here's the Pestilent Monstrosity. And down he goes, level 25. We gained a talent point. Well, I'll equip that later. And we've gained glyphs, which I'll go through in one of the coming episodes. Right. Huh. There, there he is, calling Sylvanas the same word that uh, Garrosh did. Right, down we go. Let's pull him on down here. Pistol Barrage! Pistol Barrage! Out of there! Uh, oh, Bloodthirsty Ghouls are not on me. I need to get in there. Huh. Let's keep them all on me. And again. Just, you know, we'll fight him up here. Not a problem. Doesn't really matter where you fight him. He's not one of those bosses that has a very optimal spot, spot to be fighting from. Uh, oh, Daku is in trouble. Oh, didn't heal himself up. Yeah, he got cursed bullets. Okay, so now it's, it's on us to survive here. Do we have anything? We do have a healing potion. Go ahead and put that in our bars here. Ooh, I need to be not standing in that if I want to live. Um, yeah, we just need to burn this guy down. Uh, cursed bullets, alright, that's gonna kill that guy. Uh, because that's something you need to heal through. But, we should be able to still kill this guy. Uh, mortal wound on me. Alright, I'm still gonna, uh, let me cast, let me, there's my healing potion. There we go. And, wow, we leveled up to level 26. We gained, like, basically a level after, after finishing a dungeon. Because there's a big bonus associated with finishing the dungeon. And that basically gives us a level each time. So, yeah, now DS, and, DS is level 25. Now I'm level 26, and right before we pulled this guy, uh, I had just hit 25, and he had been 24, I think. Or 23, even. So, yeah. Uh, that's that's rapid, rapid XP leveling for you. Another satchel. 
Um, let's see, is it... Uh, it's, our current, it's the same as the one we got last time. Alright, um... Another? Well, okay. So thanks everybody for watching, my name has been Dratnos. Been doing a few dungeons with Dustin Pals. See you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>